Won your novel, The Blue Fox, won a major Nordic prize. And it, it's so beautiful. It's set in 19th century Iceland, and one of the main characters is a priest, but is also a hunter of these Arctic foxes, who, during the hunt, because of his own fault, <coughs> comes trapped under the glacier. And you include a great description of the Icelandic character at that point. Could you read that section for me? On the day, for presturin under jöklinum, a verða uggandi um gerðsmunni sína. On the fifth day, the priest under the glacier began to fear for his sanity. So he did what comes most naturally to an Icelander when he's in a fix. That is, to recite ballads, verses and rhymes, sing loud and clear to himself, and when all else fails, to recall his hymns. This is a fail-safe old trick if man wish to preserve their wits. This book, The Blue Fox, was written here. And I can tell you that uh, when I had finished the last chapter, I cleared the floor here as best as I could. And I put the novel, it's not long, page by page on the floor. So I had the whole novel laid out like white snow with some black patches and uh, it looked perfect apart from a little imbalance close to the end of the second part and I remember I took two pages from the end of that chapter, that imbalance chapter and moved it in front and all of a sudden it was perfect, absolutely perfect and I knew that I had written a book that would probably make my name. It will settle at north of 20 cents, mate. So I walk here along the shore towards the old harbour and then I might walk back towards the old cemetery and the We're looking at links between how people think about life events and their risk of developing mental health problems. I've 
Outlook is next. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. Once a week there was a plate in front of our door. A couple of weeks later it was every other day until it was every day. Nerves started to feel uncomfortable now with the neighbours' attention. Before long he had real reason to welcome. Bettina got up in the night and went to the kitchen and looked out in the garden and there he was. He kind of stormed up and tried to break open the garden door. The police came and that was that. Until the next morning. Bettina checked the garden and underneath the window of our sleeping room where she found a letter. That letter contained a message that sent their lives into a tailspin. That story after the news. Hello, I'm Neil Nunes with the BBC News. South Africa's governing ANC is reported to have formally demanded the resignation of President Jacob Zuma who is clinging to power in spite of corruption scandals. Reports say the ANC Secretary-General went to see Mr. Zuma to advise him formally of the party's decision. From Pretoria, here's Andrew Hockey. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got some fruits, I can't eat I, I just can't do it at the moment. No. I bought some fresh grapes, some some uh, bananas. It's a scam, Mum. Don't worry about it. Just put the phone down. It, it was all an automated message, yeah? Yeah, well... No, no, no. It's an... OK. Was it an automated message? It wasn't somebody speaking, it was an automated recorded call, yeah? Yeah. No, l listen, listen to what I'm saying. No, listen to what I'm saying, Mum. OK. Now, my question is... Was it a real person speaking, or was it a recording speaking? Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it, Mum. Don't, Mum, listen. Do not worry about it. It is a scam. What they're aiming to do is get money from you to settle a, a lawsuit which doesn't exist. It's just, when you get that again, don't worry about it, just hang up the phone, yeah? Yeah. Don't worry about it, they're happening all over the world, Mum. Your...
extremely good natured. You you know, you take things very much in your stride. I, I've, I've never, well, I know you're my son, but uh, gosh, I've never known anybody quite like you. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, you're just a super little son. So that's all. Don't worry about it. Make yourself a cup of tea and forget all about it.